Good morning. It's day four and I'm here at my camp on Anticosti Island. That's a loon in the background and some construction equipment because of course, <laughs> plans didn't really survive the first 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so I talked to another bike packer who was just getting onto the ship as I was leaving. He said that road is pretty, pretty rough. So um, what I probably should have done <laughs> is given myself a day here at Port Meunier uh, to get my bearings. And I might do that. Um, I've had my breakfast, had my coffee, had a deer walk up to me, got a photo of that all that had a fox walk by so already a nice introduction to the wildlife here um and uh so i'm gonna go on a reconnaissance mission um on the bike i'll probably take some photos etc check out that road uh go pick up that envelope that was for me um and then make plans accordingly so that's it for now Okay, I've cycled up seven kilometers of paved road from Port Minier up to the airport turnoff. Now I'm on dirt road. I don't know if this is the main road yet, uh, but this doesn't look terrible. There's lots of flat spots and seems all right. Just the question is, how long does it continue like this? Okay, what I've been riding on is the airport road. This is the intersection. And this is the trans Anticostian. 258 kilometers to the far end. So it doesn't look bad here. But again, I'm going to ride up to the ridge and see what it's like a little ways down. Okay, I'm 8 kilometers up the road now. And it looks like this. So it's kind of hard packed, but you can see there's rocks sticking out and that's probably what does havoc on tires because the rocks don't move, right? They don't give. I don't know if it's like this all the way down, but if it is, I think it's doable. So I did my original survey from the website, starting at the campsite, going up this paved road here. It's a bit of a hill there, but nothing major. And around to the airport then it switched to dirt road and then at this intersection down here is paved all the way up but up along the Transacostian it was also dirt and this is the eight kilometer mark everything looked fine nothing like the bad conditions that were reported so I rode back into town and visited the various agencies that were involved in my trip uh, the info booth, the CPAC site, the uh, Port Vernie Genevieve, and then went back to my campsite with a free afternoon. Okay, I got everything sorted out. Although, word of advice, uh, <laughs> if you come here and you've never been here before, give yourself an extra day in Port Menier, or Port Menier to get your bearings um, because I certainly needed it. So I went to the uh, information booth and they run the campground here and they told me there's power here in this nice little area with showers and laundry facilities. And uh, so I'm able to recharge my CPAP and my phone here as I need to. Um, so, and I was also able to check the road. I registered with uh, Genevieve Pouvoirie, who run one of the campgrounds, and CEPAC, which is the Quebec Camping Agency and Parks Agency, for the other parking spots. Checked the road, confirmed that the road is like that the rest of the way. Uh, we've got ATVs in the background. <laughs> um, so I think I'll be able to do that. Uh, if not, well, I have contingency plans, so, you know, I'm all set. Also, yesterday I discovered that I forgot to upgrade my Garmin account for the month. 
So and that's the primary reason for my delay because I had to make sure I went into town, got a hold of some Wi-Fi. There is Wi-Fi there at the information booth and also at the hardware store and uh, got my account upgraded and connection with Andrea all set so that she doesn't worry every day while I'm out here. Uh, they have a very well stocked hardware store, very well stocked grocery store. So don't panic if you forget stuff, they've got you covered. And I remembered at the last minute to buy my backup uh, lighters just in case. So I'm going to do a test ride now out to the West Point, see how it goes and uh, test my tracking with Andrea. And then uh, I made reservations at the uh, hotel, the real hotel, not the fake ruined hotel, the chalet that's out here. Uh, the real hotel is the Auberge. So I'll be having breakfast there tomorrow, yum. And I made my reservation for the Saturday. I get back for a nice salmon dinner. <laughs> All right, so off to the West Point and maybe some higher quality video now that I know I have some power. Okay, this is the Anticosti Road Report. Helicopter sound. <laughs> okay, this is the uh, state of the road going to uh, West Point or Point West, Point West, uh, just past the campground exit. As you can see, it's nice, clear, flat gravel. I, one thing I should note is part of the reason I picked August was because roads, gravel roads are a lot better in August than they are earlier in the year when they throw down fresh gravel. They haven't thrown down fresh gravel and so this has all been worked in pretty well. Anyhow, I'll keep you updated. Okay, this is another trail quality report. This is uh, Sentier Lanso Fraise, Strawberry Fields, I think, and uh, part of the Sentier de West. Now, I'm not taking this one. I think I could, but it wouldn't be nearly as nice as the road. You see, it's kind of rough. It looks like it continues like this. It's used by ATVs, as you can tell by the sign. And that's part of what makes it rough. Similar to the trails that I uh, biked back in Ontario last year. So doable not so pleasant. Okay, came along another intersection in the road. There's the direction I'm going uh, toward Bay St. Clair, four and a half kilometers away. This is another road to uh, Anso Frez, Strawberry Fields. And as you can see, this is much better condition than the other one. Obviously, they probably connect at some point, so there's an option for you. Uh, I don't know how long the bad part of the road is and how long the good part of the road is, but there is a bad part and there is a good part. Okay, there was a fork in the road. So Bay St. Clair, Point West. I chose Point West. So slightly longer road, I think, but here's the view. down this hill riding with one hand. Another road report. This is the road that runs along the coastline here toward Point West and it's kind of rough but it still seems all right and uh, it's interesting you see all the trees bent over. Do you think they have some wind here? So I'm right along the coast, headed toward Point West. Forgot to put my microphone in, but you get the idea. So I've made it to Point West. This is what there is. This is the wreck of Wailu. That's the name on the front of the boat. As you can see, it had one very bad day. I think probably haven't been good for it ever since either. <laughs> I'm gonna watch my step here. Be 
I know you want to see. This is the bay, I've gone back to it. And here's the road. And see, it's a bit stony. Two track road up to, I think it's an English bay. Or sorry, English point, point down left. Something like that. And there's the ocean there. I'm turning back here, because there's always another road. It's getting on in the afternoon and there's people up there. sign here debut or start and you see it's a hiking trail but what really caught my eye uh, you know the trail you, you can't cycle it or at least I can't but uh, it's a nice hiking trail but check this out it's a, an, a lighthouse or something anyhow the trail goes off down there it looks very nice and peaceful I don't know how long it is but this is kilometer zero. And also, what's that? The world's best outhouse? I don't know. Started off at the campsite here, went up this road, and this is where the VTT to answer the phrase starts, and then continuing along. This is where the nice road to Anso phrase starts. Continuing along. It's the fork in the road here. This is a pretty good downhill. And then along the coast here, all the way to the point. And then I backtrack along the wreck is right around here. Continue back here to the bay, and then up another road past the cemetery. And then all the way back, the glorious outhouse and the debut sign is around here. Today's supper is ginger fried stirred rice with beef. I'll let you know how it is after I finish it. Verdict? It was okay. Five or six out of ten. It wasn't until after I made it that I realized that the easy fill line is this measurement thing on the side and I'm supposed to fill it to eight. I probably filled it more than that to like 13 or so so it was a bit watery but you know i don't mind getting extra extra water into the system especially early i always listen to what survivor man says and survivor man says if you have excess water drink it while you've got it and i know the island's got lots of water on it but um it's going to be at a premium because i'm going to have to filter every drop i drink so filling up now thanks les so I have some visitors here. Oh, that one there too. Yep. They just want company. And that's it for today. I'm gonna finish off. Uh, day four was, well, spectacular. <laughs> Look at the weather. Um, it's still warm, it's cooling off, but uh, I've had stuff out drying. I don't think it really dries here, but We'll see how that works. It was cold last night. I hope for better tonight, but whatever. We'll see. Um, I have a finger covering something there. There we go. <laughs> so that's it for today. And uh, see you on the other side tomorrow.